Today we are very happy and uh, honored to invite a very distinguished and young scholar, Professor Candace from Stanford University. Uh, Professor Candace he obtained his uh, bachelor degree from Echo Polytechnic French in 1993 and the Stanford PhD in Statistics in 1998 under a very famous professor, Professor David Donahue, his CSR advisor. Then he moved to Caltech in 2000 and he turned back to Stanford in, as a chair professor. Professor Candace, uh, I estimate he's very young, about 43 and 44 years old. <laughs> And he made a great <laughs> achievement in uh, comprehensive sensing, curve rate and wavelength theory, and received very technical awards and honors. We know the comprehensive sensing recently is a very big event in the mathematics and the signal positive community. Not only in the theory is a breakthrough, it has also a very wide and practical applications. So today she will give a talk on comprehensive sensing to super resolutions. Let's welcome Professor Hanna. So your estimate is quite good. Uh, not quite 44, I'm 42. So. <laughs> <laughs> I look older than I look. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, today I will talk about comprehensive sensing, but Mainly it's about super resolution, and so uh, this is a third lecture I'm giving on your island. And so I've talked on comprehensive sensing in the first lecture, and really the subject of this lecture is really super resolution. But uh, I will just talk about comprehensive sensing to really contrast <coughs> comprehensive sensing and super resolution, which in my view are very different things. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about a very important subject uh, in applied science, which is. Uh, situations in which we have pure equations and unknowns. So there is an object of interest, uh, X, uh, which could be a signal, so it could be a 2D signal, a 3D signal, a 4D signal, X, Y, Z, and time, an image, a video sequence, a data matrix. We've seen many examples in the first two lectures, and uh, so it could be a number of things. And the thing that we are discussing and we've been discussing in lecture one is that well, in many cases, I cannot really acquire much data about this signal of interest, perhaps because sensors are expensive to manufacture, and so I have a few sensors, and so I can only record a few data points. Perhaps because the measurements are very expensive, the data collection can be very expensive. Um, this is very predominant in statistics at the moment, which is uh, essentially is a key larger than any literature. Um, perhaps the data collection is very slow. And so for all these reasons now, we are confronted with problems of this time where we've got fewer equations than we like to have. I think an example, uh, which is not an example I'm going to talk about today, but a, a, a problem in which this comes a lot about is like in clinical studies where, for example, X might be, you know, something having to do with um, the number of alleles that you have in at a certain locations, of a certain type of certain locations on the chromosome, right? And Y would be the number of, the size of Y would be the number of people in your study. And so typically the number of people in your study is much lower than the number of places in the chromosome that you're trying, on the chromosome that you try to assess. So, but today we're going to be concerned with two applications that are a bit different. So we're going to talk about magnetic resonance imaging and high resolution microscopy, which are examples of this highly underdetermined system. So I know that Taiwan, I mean, we see a lot of Taiwan students at Stanford, and we know, I know that you're very well educated. And so when you see underdetermined system of the equation, you know that you cannot solve. But that what we'll see in this lecture is that while well, under certain conditions you can solve highly underdetermined system of equation. Okay, so my first example is, is uh, medical imaging. Um, so this is a uh, Imaging, uh, images of uh, body tissue uh, as acquired by an MR scan. And so magnetic resonance imaging is really a wonderful imaging modality. Uh, 
Um, and that's you right now. I realize that I forgot to uh, add slides to my presentation. So um, let me just. Uh, so MR imaging is a wonderful modality um, that um, allows you to see inside the body uh, in a non-invasive way. And so you can, leave, uh, you can see live tissues uh, inside the body, and this is something we like to use a lot. The way uh, MR imaging works mathematically is uh, very simple. Um, essentially, after you do a lot of mathematics, what you realize is what, what happens when you enter an MR scan is that an MR scan will acquire information about what's inside your body by sampling, sampling the Fourier transform. So whenever you uh, acquire data uh, in a scanner, what happens is like you go in your scanner and the scanner will actually sample uh, an image like this in case.